Welcome to the FanDuel Hurry Up. I'm Ariel Epstein, joined now by Gabe Morenzi. Gabe, Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year, uh, Ariel. Uh, let's do this thing. All right, so it's a big time of year right now in the NFL, getting into playoff mode. However, let's look even further. Who are you liking to go to the Super Bowl, starting with the Kansas City Chiefs? Well, FanDuel asked us to put together a six-pack of NFL playoff uh, future wagers um, so we figured we had to attack from a value uh, point of view. I can't just tell you, well, the Baltimore Ravens are going to win the Super Bowl and they're going to play against the San Francisco 49ers, although history does tell us that seeding uh, does matter, all right? Um, you know, being the one seed or the two seed really does matter. You play one less game, and if you look at the recent history of the National Football League, it's nothing but one seeds and two seeds uh, that have won the Super Bowl. Let's start off uh, with the Kansas City Chiefs here. Kansas City Chiefs right now plus 450 at FanDuel uh, to win the Super Bowl. Before the year started, I said the Kansas City Chiefs were going to win the Super Bowl. They were in the plus 700, plus 800 range. So we didn't lose too much uh, value uh, if you still want to take the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, the thing with the Kansas City Chiefs uh, is they're starting to play their best football uh, right now. Mahomes got hurt earlier in the year. And they're starting to come together uh, right now. Their offense is starting to click. Last year, they put up like 35 points a game. Uh, this year, just 28 points a game. But if you notice, Baltimore is like Kansas City was last year. And if you remember, Kansas City did not get to the Super Bowl uh, last year. Now, hear me out on this. Lamar Jackson is awesome, and he is going to be the most valuable player. All right? That's a stone-cold luck. You know what else is stone-cold luck? NFL MVPs have a Super Bowl curse, a big one. And in fact, the last nine players to win the most valuable player and play in the Super Bowl all have lost. You have to go all the way back to the Kurt Warner era uh, with the St. Louis Rams uh, at the time. It's, we're talking 19 years since an MVP has won the MVP in a regular season and then uh, won the Super Bowl as well. All right, the MVP curse is real, as good as Baltimore has been. I'm not so sure they're going to actually get uh, to Miami when it's all said and done. And if they don't, I think it could be the Kansas City Chiefs that knock them off. They're the most well-suited to knock other Ravens off. And at uh, plus 450, it puts itself in a nice hedge situation if they make it to Miami. Plus 450 for the Kansas City Chiefs to win the Super Bowl. Gabe, I know you like this next one. The Bills are at plus 2,500 to win the AFC. Do you like those odds? I like the odds a lot. And I, listen, I'm a diehard Buffalo Bill fan, but I'm also uh, not as drunk and crazy and as dumb as the dudes that are slamming each other through the parking lot uh, tables uh, before these games. Uh, but with that being stated, 25 to 1, that's a fat number. When I say fat, I mean cool fat. P-H-A-T, uh, baby. 25 to 1. Now, they beat the Houston Texans this week, and there's no guarantee they are going to beat the Houston Texans, but they could uh, beat the Houston Texans. Then they're only two wins away uh, from winning the AFC, and you're putting yourself in a nice head situation. Think of these future plays as, uh, as stocks, more so than bets. All right, they're stocks. It's almost like the Kentucky Derby. All right, you got 20 horses. You're not just taking one horse. You're going to take an 8-1, to one, a 12-1. to one. You're going to take enough plus money long shots that if one of them wins, you still make money. And this is an instance in how we're approaching the National Football League playoffs. There's no value in betting on the Baltimore Ravens, all right? Can the Ravens make the Super Bowl? Of course they can. But there's no value on uh, betting on them uh, to make the Super Bowl. The Buffalo Bills provide a lot of value. Now, if you buy into this whole defense wins championship stuff, and I think that's kind of outdated a little bit, you need a fine line between offense and defense. The most Super Bowl champions, you'll notice, we're top 10 offense, top 10 defense. You know, and you'll notice most of the teams are the number one offense and then they have an okay defense or they have a really good defense, but their offense is average. They don't generally win. You need to be top 10 in both categories and the Bills are not, but their defense is that good. And the thing about the Buffalo Bills that I like about this value at 25 to one to win the AFC, they've already played these teams in the AFC. I saw them play against the Baltimore Ravens uh, last month. All right, it was a close football game. It was 24-17, and the Bills had the ball like the 10-yard line. They just couldn't punch it in. I saw the uh, Buffalo Bills play the Patriots twice this year. Same thing. We're talking about six-point games, four-point games, very close football games. 
The Buffalo Bills defense will have them in every football game that they play. Can their offense break through? Their offense got a little bit better. They got that up to about 19 points a game uh, down the stretch. They only gave up 16 points a game, Errol, at 25-1 to one, uh, just to win three games. And I'll tell you guys, let me repeat this once again. We're looking at hedging opportunities as well. You get the Bills at 25-1 to one to win the, uh, the conference right now. Not the Super Bowl, but just the conference. They beat Houston. It's not 25-1 to one anymore. It's like 7-1. to one. And, hey, you can put your ticket up on prop swap uh, if you wanted at that point in time. There's a lot of hedging opportunities moving forward. Let's say the Bills win against Houston. You got them 25-1. to one. Let's say they win again. Next thing you know, you're going into the AFC Conference Championship game with a 25-1 to one ticket in your back pocket that you can definitely hedge. Uh, Bills are a good value pick, a 25-1 to one to win the AFC. Switching to the NFC. It's a pick that I really like of yours. I want you to convince me to definitely go and take the Saints at plus 600 to win the Super Bowl. Well, I'll do my uh, best. I always wanted to be an attorney, so I'll pretend <laughs> that uh, you're, uh, you're on the jury. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the New Orleans Saints were clearly wronged uh, last year by the National uh, Football League. Uh, we're talking about a red-hot New Orleans Saints football team that somehow missed out on a bye when it was all said and done because the NFC was just that crazy. Uh, this year, uh, but the Saints are as dangerous as anybody in the NFL. Uh, they've got a chip on their shoulder. They've got a Hall of Fame quarterback. They've got a future Hall of Famer wide receiver. Um, don't look now, but Alvin Kamara starting to come alive. And, you know, you remember last year, the Saints, they lit it up earlier in the year. They tore it apart. Drew Brees seemed to be a little bit tired when they got to the playoffs. Kamara was a little bit worn out when they got to the playoffs. Sean Payton's good enough that he knows how to manage his team and they're deep enough on offense that he can manage the team. I think that Drew Brees being out for the five weeks really actually helped them. All right, it helped the Saints as a whole. They saw how good they could be even without Drew Brees. They didn't lose a game uh, with Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, But Drew Brees not getting any younger right now and just even mentally, psychologically, and physically to be off for that amount of time. I think has actually made Drew Brees and that offense more dangerous coming into the playoffs. And as evident of the fact, the Saints have scored uh, 34 more points, Ariel, in six of their last seven football games. Now, the cons and the negatives uh, with the Saints, and there's not a lot of them, uh, but they're going to have to go on the road, all right? They're going to have to deal with the Minnesota Vikings, and I don't think that game's going to be as easy as everyone making it out to be either. Um, but they, so they have to deal with the Vikings. After that, you know, they're going to be going to Green Bay. And they win that game. They're going to be going to Green Bay. And I know everyone underestimates the Green Bay Packers, but that's not an automatic win for them. Another con is their defense. The Saints can make plays. They're athletic, but they find themselves in a lot of crazy track meet uh, style football games. And it's hard to win multiple times like that on a weekly basis uh, without something going against you or a call going against you. And speaking of which, final, finally, but not uh, the least, uh, so to speak, is it's real, all right? There's a saying, you're not paranoid if you're right. And Sean, Par- uh, Sean Payton, I call him Sean Paranoid, <laughs> but Sean, Sean Paranoid Payton, he's not crazy. You know, all the league's out to get him. The league is out to get him. All right, the league is out to get him. The National Football League hates uh, Sean Payton. They hate the New Orleans Saints. They never get any calls. And I got to tell you, I don't have a lot of confidence they're going to get a call against uh, one of the league's new poster boys in Jimmy G uh, in the playoffs. Uh, But with that being stated, at this type of value, plus 600 for the New Orleans Saints, definitely worth a play. Gabe, another quarterback in the NFC that's pretty reliable is Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers. The Packers are at plus 850 to win the Super Bowl right now. Why would they be a good pick? I'm surprised the Packers aren't uh, plus uh, 80,000 to win. How are they even in the playoffs? Did the NFL make a mistake? And they allowed the Packers in because everything I read, like if you didn't watch the NFL this year, everything I read about the Packers is they're average. They're terrible. They can't beat anybody. Uh, Yet, uh, you know, the fact of the matter is they're a 13-win football team. Uh, The fact of the matter is they have Aaron Rodgers as their quarterback. Devontae Adams is a star wide receiver. And don't look now, but Aaron Jones is starting to play like all the fantasy players. Per, uh, all the fantasy experts have been saying he could play like for the last couple of years. It took Jones a little while to get here, but he's a dangerous back uh, right now. The Green Bay Packers are a really dangerous football team that everybody underestimates. Nobody's talking about them in this playoff tournament, yet they have home field. Do I think the Green Bay Packers are awesome? No, it doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what you think, all right? And none of these teams have to be the best team in the league. That's not the way it works. You have to be better than the team that you play for three and a half hours. 
And the Green Bay Packers only have to be better than two teams uh, to get uh, to Miami in the Super Bowl. Aaron Rodgers has a chip on his shoulder. And while many people, and this is where fantasy football and DFS skews people's opinions of teams, Aaron Rodgers is not a fantasy stat anymore, or at least this year in this offense. And, oh, is Aaron Rodgers struggling? I don't know. If I'm a Green Bay Packer fan and I'm a Green Bay Packer um, you know, coach, I'd rather win 13 games and have Aaron Rodgers throw for 220 yards a game uh, than Aaron Rodgers running around uh, putting up highlight reel numbers and you know killing the stats and losing, right? They're a complete football team. They're a dangerous uh, football team, and they have home field advantage as well. Now, what I like about this, and earlier I told you guys I like the Saints in the plus 600 uh, range. We get the Packers at plus 850 to win the Super Bowl. If everything plays out according to the way it should, the New Orleans Saints are going to play the Green Bay Packers. So, in other words, between the Saints and the Packers, you almost have an automatic bid. You hear where I'm going with this? You almost have an automatic bid in to the NFC Conference Championship game. Then you even have an early hedge opportunity if you want. Think about it. If you got the Saints at 6-1 to one to win the Super Bowl, and you got the Packers at 8-50 to win the Super Bowl, and they're playing San Francisco, you still have enough wiggle room to actually step up and hedge your way out and find a way to make a profit. Don't sleep on the Green Bay Packers, uh, guys. They're not going to be easy to beat at Lambeau in a plus 850. I think they're worth a look. All right, Gabe. Now it's time to name the finalists. Who do you think are going to be the two teams in the Super Bowl this year? Well, before the year started, uh, Earl, I picked the uh, Kansas City Chiefs and the New Orleans Saints, and I said that the Kansas City Chiefs uh, would win the Super Bowl. I don't like, um, I don't change my picks. I, I know there's people out there that uh, bet what I say, and I'm not, well, uh, that was then. Uh, you know, I don't mean it now. I mean what I say, and I say what I mean, and I put my money on every one of these picks that I share uh, with the public. Uh, but with that being stated, and I will have a piece of this, I will have a piece of uh, Kansas City and New Orleans in the name the finalist prop, and I love the name the finalist prop uh, over at FanDuel. But, you know, I've been slow to come around on this football team. Earlier in the year, I was like, ah, their defense is really good, but how, you know, are they that great? And I don't know. And really, they're like a better Buffalo. The San Francisco 49ers, a better version of the Buffalo Bills. Bunch of no-name wide receivers, no-name running backs. Jimmy G's okay sometimes, but is he? Uh, they don't have any wide receivers. They have a great freaking defense, uh, though. And you know who the star of the San Francisco 49ers is? Kyle Shanahan. Um, you know, great coach, and these, these guys get hyped up too early in their careers without really ever accomplishing anything. But we've seen what Kyle Shanahan can do. We saw how successful he was with the Atlanta Falcons and that offense uh, getting to the Super Bowl. We're seeing how successful he is right now. The wide receivers, and these guys are no names, they're open on every damn play. They're wide open. Uh, he's the best play caller in the National Football League right now, uh, this guy. They literally have home field. They don't have to leave the Bay Area before they go to Miami. I just feel as though San Francisco are going to be tough to beat. I don't like giving you guys a favorite, so I'm not telling you they're going to win the conference here. But in the name not finalist prop, let's go the San Francisco 49ers against the Kansas City Chiefs. Niners Chiefs Super Bowl in Miami. And we get some decent odds here at plus 600 if this comes to fruition. Gabe, you like Kansas City and San Francisco as the finalists in the Super Bowl. With that being said, there's also the prop on FanDuel that and I just—I I know you're a Raven fan, so let yeah. me just throw this in here. I'm not anti-Ravens. There's just not not any value betting with the Ravens. And as I've told you guys, the MVP curse is real. You can believe in it and, or, or not. Uh, but as I stated, the last nine MVPs uh, in a National Football League that played in the Super Bowl are 0 and 9. All right. And I think things are going to tighten up a little bit. I think Baltimore getting knocked off, but wouldn't shock me if Baltimore made the Super Bowl. Obviously, but I'm going to go with Kansas City to knock them off. In the NFC, though, with the 49ers, you like the most passing yards prop in the playoffs to go to the 49ers quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo. Why do you like him over some of the other quarterbacks at plus 650? Well, because I think he's going to play in three football games. To be honest, I'd take a look at Mahomes with this prop as well. Yet, now I'm sort of playing to form here. Ultimately, who do I really think is going to be in the Super Bowl? I like this prop because it's part fantasy, part betting, right? You're not really betting. It's not like, well, this guy's going to throw for more yards. Yeah, but how many games is he going to play in? Who is he playing against? Drew Brees is the favorite for this prop, but there's no value on him. 
and they're thinking that he could play a bunch of games, and he could, but I don't think they're going to get to the Super Bowl uh, ultimately when it's all said and done. I think they'll probably get knocked off uh, either in, in Green Bay or in, um, or in San Francisco. So I'm not going to take Drew I'm thinking about Mahomes. Mahomes seems like the obvious one, actually. But there's more value with Jimmy G. And then I started to think, Mahomes in the playoffs, probably going to play the New England Patriots. All right? The New England Patriots' defense is still good. That game will not be a track meet. Like, he's not going to throw for 380 yards against the Patriots in a playoff game. Then the following week, let's just say, hypothetically, Mahomes won. He would play against Baltimore. Could be some bad weather, smash mouth. I don't think Baltimore and KC would be a track meet game either. Then I get to Jimmy G at plus 650, dumps it off to the running backs. George Kittle racks up a bunch of yards. They're going to be playing in nice weather. They're also going to be playing against teams that are in higher scoring games, potentially. I mean, look, they could play against Aaron Rodgers. They could play against uh, Drew Brees. There's a lot of options for San Francisco to play in higher scoring games, I find, than Kansas City. I don't have a problem with taking Patrick Mahomes to win this prop, uh, but they wanted six, not seven. Take Mahomes and Garoppolo then, all right? Garoppolo and Mahomes, most passing yards in the playoffs. We're just about a month away from finding out who the first Super Bowl champion of the decade is going to be. For Gabe Morenzi, I'm Ariel Epstein. Happy New Year, everybody.